G'day guys. I just thought maybe I should do a video on how to get one of these coils apart without wrecking it. So I will do that and I'm going to explain. Here we go. When you do these, I've taken off the skid plate. Make sure you take off the skid plate first. So yeah, I've popped the skid plate off. It's only a pressure fit. They just pop off. But when you work with a, a, a knife like this, make sure the blade is locked and work away from yourself. Do not put your hand in front of it because it, it's going to go slip and you're going to go and slice your hand open. You have to do it the way I'm doing it like this first of all don't push the blade all the way in and try and go around what you're going to do and i'm i'm using my engineers four eye magnifiers on this so i can get in really good and close just in the there like i don't know if you can even see that i'm just going around and i'm just basically scouring it with the tip of the blade so they're, I think they're um, they're either uh, the old ones are stuck together with uh, acetone. You can get acetone, mix some um, uh, some of this uh, plastic into the acetone, and you can make a glue out of it, like a paste, and wipe it round. That's how some of it was done. You can do direct acetone on each part of the plastic and press it together, and it will melt and um, bind. Then you can rub some filler in there. Um, it's only um, ABS anyway, and it, ABS dissolves in acetone. So don't put acetone on your coil because you'll dissolve your coil shells. So anyway, so all you do is just break that seal. And just go around. Don't put the blade, or put your hand in front of the blade, should I say. And don't, if it gets stuck, don't go and push like crazy because what it'll do, the blade will go in and it'll cut through the, this uh, top part. It'll put slices through it. Don't do that. I've done that in the past. Learned my lesson and I haven't done it again. So there we go. Look, just that. I've already been around this very lightly and now it's gone in. You want to keep your uh, blade Flat. You don't want to bend it up like that or down like that. You want to keep it flat with this bit here as you go around. Just see how I go. What I do is I push it with my thumb. Okay, I keep really good control on this. Actually, this one's coming apart really well. Sometimes they're absolute pigs of things to get apart. Okay, this is just cracking as I go. Yep, and then we hit a, a tough bit. Okay, so here it gets stuck there. Don't continue. Take the knife out, even though it binds. There we go. And just scour it again. A little bit. Yep, it's a lot of melted plastic there or something. Whoopsies. Yeah, it's a real tough bit right here. Okay, see if I can get past. You've got to be careful when you get the whole blade in because it will want to jump up. you got to angle the blade down a bit, but don't cut into the bottom part. If you've done it a few times, you'll get it right, but try not to wreck your first one. This is, I'm pushing like, like um, a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on this. Uh, okay. Oh, dear me, it's tough. Okay. Oh, there we go. Crack, crack. The glue's giving you away. I'm getting in. I don't know if there's a better way of doing this. <coughs> I don't know. You can use a Dremel, but I think you just wreck it. 
think it's got to be careful. Okay. You hear it um, crack occasionally. There we go. It's just a busted, a busted uh, double D anyway. So we're going to convert it into a mono. There we go. Oh, look at that. I think I'm all the way around, am I? That hard bit here. Counting my chickens before they hatch. Ah, dear me. We'll get there. Yeah, I thought I was a lot further along than what I was. But when you think about it, it's a fairly large circumference. So yeah, I'm just running the knife around now, getting a bit of depth in there. Now I think I've got it all apart. And I didn't put one cut mark through it, so let's see if we can uh, pull it apart. Oh, I should have undone that, shouldn't I? There we go. Hey, bingo. Or presto. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. I don't really need to undo that. I don't think it's grabbing too hard. There we go. Bits of plastic and whatever. Whoops. They go in the bin. So there is our pancake coil. And grab hold of the wires here and just pull it out. And if you have a look here, I'll show you something. This is why your coils go noisy. Maybe, can you see the graphite on this? Well, that graphite was on the cardboard on the bottom of the coil. And what it does, it has high and low spots on the bottom of the coil and it rubs off. So it sits there and just rubs, presses in various spots. It's not too bad. But when the cardboard, that's just cardboard, by the way, stuck on with masking tape, but coated with a graphite. So, and the other thing too, always check uh, the mounts and uh, make sure that uh, the resin's still good. You don't want uh, the resin to fall out because you've got to screw this thing together. It'll just crush and uh, crack and break. But let's have a look at our um, homage on the coil. I'll grab my El Cheapo multimeter. Been through hell, this thing. Okay, and have a look. Oops. Grab the microphone by mistake. So, yeah, we'll just have a look at uh, what it says. So, if we go on here, and roughly you just want to stick it about an inch apart or something like that. There you go. If you can see that, maybe you can't. It's basically 100 ohms, 103 ohms. If you do it a centimetre apart, it's probably down at 80 or 90. That's what you want to see. So, you know, quarter inch, centimetre, whatever. About, you know, around 80, 80, 90 ohms. That's pretty, um, you know, garden variety standard on these. So you can uh, pull the whole thing apart. Uh, you just you peel the tape off very uh, carefully, uh, heat it up a little bit. If you get that uh, tape, just heat it up. Not don't do it in Ballarat weather. Uh, it will grab and rip the carbon off. If you heat it up a little bit, uh, it will come off. There's uh, also you could probably put some sort of solvent on it, maybe some you know methylated spirits. I wouldn't use acetone or anything, but. Uh, if, if I do rip this, I've got this stuff I can just repaint it anyway. But where the shiny bits are here, it hasn't actually worn through yet. But I don't know if you can see the shiny bits there. That, that'll that eventually uh, wear through. And even the smallest wear down 
uh, to the bare cardboard, when you put this to the ground, it'll make noise. It won't ground balance properly. So that's uh, the story about these coils. But we can uh, easily pull it apart. That's no big deal. Under the uh, tape here, there is the grounding wire. Now the grounding wire has to be around about 0 0.12 of a millimeter. Um, um, basically not copper, but make sure it's um, tin plated or nickel plated, not nickel, tin, tinned, just tinned. <laughs> uh, don't put nickel near coils, it's ferrous. But any, just a tin piece of uh, copper wire. Uh, that's what that is under there. You can lift it up and it basically joins this bit to this bit and goes on to the outer uh, braid of uh, for memories of transmit winding. I haven't done double Ds for a while, but uh, yeah, just a very fine bit of uh, wire, a single strand. Just, a, just get some multi-strand wire and uh, just put it, it's not critical really as long as it connects uh, and you want it to connect good another thing you do when you put it down and tape it you can dab um, some carbon paint on it like uh, that uh, Y shield or something like that along the wire and uh, then put the tape on and it will set down hard you don't want it wiggling around it'll make a noisy coil so that is uh, the story there okay we'll, we'll see if we can uh, actually uh, lift some of this up i to see um, if I can do it. Uh, Ballarat weather. Can I do it? Um, or the other way of doing it. Okay. I'm, and I've got to explain this to you too. Say the bottom one here. The bottom one, right, what they do is you, you make it a little bit bigger. And it's all painted, of course. And it folds over like this. So it's all here. Up, up folded okay so it's shielding the wires as well as the bottom the top one is just a flat piece of cardboard you do not want this here to directly touch this here it stops there is a cardboard thickness of the uh, cardboard on top and it just goes up but it doesn't actually connect if you do that it will cause a shorted turn um, it'll become very very resistive to these uh, windings and you will lose energy you'll also just short the whole coil out that's a trick to cause people don't realize but what you can do if you want to get really clever you can cut here see like you just feel the natural feel of the cardboard and you can actually just cut there see that just do it carefully and retain your top cardboard or very carefully you can peel the tape and if you peel the tape there's a chance that you can um, rip up the um, carbon off the you know the painted carbon so if you want to I'll show you how you do it anyway I'm going to find a start on this bit here Go around here, find the start where they stuck it down. It's got to have a start because they started it. There it is. Okay, get on the start here. Gently just pick it like I'm doing. It's like peeling off a band aid. Okay. I'm going to try and grab it. There we go. Now I've just got that coming up a little bit there. Now it does go onto the top as well. They so fold it over. I'll try and get this. Okay, because when they put it on, they, they fold it. So see if I can do this. Now I'm going to 
I'll show you exactly what I've done there. Can you see that? Now it's it's stuck on here and stuck there as well. Now the trick to do this, just in case, do it slow. And okay, I'm gonna lose the lose the top bit for some reason. So I have to go. And I'm going to re-pick it so it comes up. There we go. I think you could probably dab this with some... Yep. With some sort of alcohol or... I don't know. I've never ever tried it. I don't want to uh, destroy it. I was going to try and retain it. Otherwise I'm going to have to patch it and uh, paint it and all sorts but actually i don't even know if i'll use this carbon i've got a better way of doing it so maybe i won't but I, i'm just showing you just in case you want to rebuild your coils or experiment very slowly she's coming off there's a bit there broke typical it's only the tape it's not the um anything underneath and stuck to my finger. Okay, I'm going to try some experiments. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a dab. Okay, I'm going to give it some Lec Clean, this stuff. I'm going to put this on it. Just see if it actually helps. Um, if it does, I don't know. It shouldn't affect the uh, foam underneath, but we'll just see what it does. Yep, does... Looks like it doesn't affect uh, anything. It uh, actually made it come come off pretty good. Then I'll just put a little bit further on. We'll just see how it goes. We've got to experiment, or else we don't know. Okay, if I put some here. I should just wipe it on with a cotton bud or something. But we'll just do this with my finger and just stick it on the top of the tape. Let's we'll see if it makes the uh, the sticky uh, fall away. I don't know if it actually actually does. It wants to stick to my fingers. Yeah, it's still sticky. I think methylated spirits might be the way to go on this. But like I say, I haven't tried. Now I'll just try um, some isopropyl alcohol on it. We'll just see what that does. Usually works on everything else. That might work on this, we'll see. I don't think it's making much of a difference. It's just the uh, same amount of force that I'm pulling on the tape. When you get the other bits of tape here, you can go a little bit faster because there's nothing to rip. But when you come off that, just be careful. The other thing I could do too, and I'll, I'll try this as an experiment too, guys. I'll get a hot, I'll get my hot air gun. I'll just heat it up a bit and see what happens. I've got it set at about 100 and 150 degrees C, but I won't get too close to it. Now look at this. Oh yes, here we go. Oh, it likes this. I think it likes the heat. There we go. That's why you don't do this in Ballarat. Ah, look at that. Beautiful. Speed up. You don't want to get this too hot, but it is affecting the glue in the tape. So it's coming off a lot better, and we haven't uh, destroyed anything. Actually, if I stick this right at the V groove, got my hand in the way, or my arm in the way, if I stick it right at the groove there, right there, it comes off quite well. I'll try and work a little bit lower down. I'm looking at what I'm doing. I'm not looking at the camera, so I've got no idea. Hang on. <laughs> try this. Here we go.
Yep, in the, in the groove on the tape. It's coming off really well. I probably want to get a bit of an angle on it. But I'll just go over the construction of these coils. So a lot of people try and make their own coils and it doesn't work. And I'll tell you why. And uh, I can already see some bodgy on this coil anyway. And I'll explain that as well. Okay. Okay, I've got to change position. I don't want hot nuts. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's that's coming off really good. I should. Uh, I'm going to increase the airflow a little bit. Give it a bit of a blast. There we go. It turned into a bit of a turbo. Turbo mode. Come on, off you come. So, guys, this is the way you do it. I turned up the, uh, the speed and it was it slowed down. Oh, now she's speeding up. Maybe the uh, the air temperature dropped. Okay. I'll keep working this. I'll get it all the way off just so it doesn't go back and stick or anything crazy like that. But yeah, you can you can do this and you can pull pull anything apart and rebuild it as long as you uh, don't destroy it in in the like, in the attempt of doing it yeah For some reason it works really good on actually on the top of the tape okay nearly there tedious process Yay, we're off. So I've got this big bit of uh, tape. You can reuse it if you wanted to. Okay, now I'll show you where some, some issues are. When you're going along and you're swinging away, now I'll put this up a bit now. There we go. When you, you can put that up too. I'll put that down a bit. There we go. Something like that. Okay. When you're going along and you hit grass, see, I'll show you where, where it's really bad. This is, this is not made correctly. See, you can see the blue foam. Uh, no Faraday shield. So whatever comes and touches here on the coil or close proximity, even wood, wet wood, grass or anything, this coil would have gone wee woo, wee woo. It's not done properly. See, a lot of it is, but where you can see the blue foam, it's not shielded. And that is all you need to make a coil that sounds off. Go right round, and here we are. That is, yeah, NQR not quite right so this coil would have sounded off look at that it's a massive exposure um, no shielding so you, you need a, a shield between the winding and uh, whatever else is out there ground trees grass anything like that because it's going to cause a capacitive effect on the wires and the wires will go it'll basically just uh, woo woo it uh, will cause that uh, problem. So anyway, what we got, is you can see the construction of it, the paper on the bottom, just bent up, and the paper on the card, well, it's about three or four times as thick as normal A4 photocopy paper, or letter, whatever it is, and uh, that's basically it. So if you really want to not risk it destroying anything, now you can see exactly the layers there and you can just cut that tape it doesn't make any difference if you leave the tape on or off that doesn't do anything is tape over it so maybe i'll do that we'll just um i'll just uh, chop it off so all you do is get on here stick your blade there and very easily 
I'm just hardly touching that. You know. Well, I'm round the wrong way to do it to, to show you, but I've got it in here. See now, now I'm cutting towards me, which I said not to do. But all you do is just lay it on there and just like that. See, lay it on the uh, blue foam, and now I'm getting on funny angles. It's difficult for me to do, but. <laughs> Hang on, how about I just turn around like this? Here we go. But I'm cutting towards myself. And now it's a little bit tight. Mm, why is it tight there? Slowly, very slowly. They glue this uh, cardboard stuff on. So maybe there's a bit of glue there. So just be wary that uh, they go all over the uh, foam with some sort of glue. But that you can get that off as well. So we go around like this. I think I've done it all. Now, in here, they've been very, very scarce with the glue. So I'll get my finger in there. But there will be glue, um, which just basically they squirt it like up and down, up and down, up and down. And the way you're going to get that off is use a what I do is use a bread knife, right? Very gently cut, cut in with a bread knife. Keep it flat on the blue foam. Don't lift it up or down. Keep it on that blue foam. You can probably do it other ways, but uh, I've done that. Just remember there's a little wire that runs uh, in here. And uh, it probably then goes through there and goes back around. So... You can you can peel it off. You can leave it there. Uh, depends what you want to do. But that's basically the uh, how these coils are constructed. And if I unfold this, this will show you how this is done. All they do is just scrunch scrunch it up, basically. And I'll put it down again. I think it's better looking at the coil than looking at my head. There we go. So we go here and see they just. They just fold the paper like, you know, like so. Um, better way to do it would be to cut it, cut cut the paper, like so, like so, like so, and just make little fan blades out of it, little paper ones. Anyway, let's see what happens here. I'll go around here. I'll just lift it up. I'll just reverse reverse the fold. So if you're very careful, you can repair your own coils. You can redo the whole thing. You could repaint it, put new uh, graphite carbon on, whatever. So have a look in there. Yep, it's got glue. Glue in there. I could probably extend the blade of that and just get it out that way. So maybe I'll do that about there and see if it locks now i usually use a bread knife but uh, we'll try it with this okay see i get the blade all the way in there and you go back this way that's where the glue is so i put the blade around that way and because i'm tr i'm showing this i'm probably cutting all the wrong uh where I said don't cut towards yourself. How about I do this? There we go. I'm not cutting towards myself. But yeah, there's glue in there. I can feel it. You just don't want to cut through your paper if you're going to reuse it. Depends what the glue's like. Some of it comes off easy. Yeah, this this is 50-50. I'm getting through it, but like I say, I should be doing this on a table, flat down, doing it like this, right? But it's a bit difficult to um, do a show and tell like that. Um, I don't know. I haven't got enough room on my bench anyway. But yeah, just work your way around. The trick is not to push in too far. You get too much resistance from the glue. There we go. Now, if you can see there, 
I've cut the glue and it's got a sliver of blue foam on it, like about a quarter of a millimeter or something like that. No big deal, it doesn't make any difference. So you gotta get and then if you look in look in there as well, you can see the windings. There's your transmit winding there. This is a double D, and the receive winding is tucked down there. So you can go around and get get this off if you want. Or you can just, you know, basically, it's, it's very crispy actually. There we go. It comes off quite easy once you get going on it. Oh God, they're a bit scarce with the glue, I'll tell you that. There we go. Some of them, um, the person putting the glue on had shares in a glue factory. And, uh, yeah. Some some other ones who did it uh, don't care less. So I'm about three quarters of the way off on this one anyway. So I just to get this is the interesting part. So I'm just going to do the interesting part. And of course, here they've gone put a whole heap of glue here. There we go. Got it off. Now, that fine wire I was telling you about, and there's a small one there. I probably uh, I probably cut it, but need not worry, need not worry. So that's what you end up with. Pancake. You can uh, clean all clean all this glue off. I don't know. You can probably wet it or something, and uh, yeah, it you know it it comes off. No big deal. So that's your half your pancake, and as you as you can see, even though I've done whatever to it. It, it hasn't uh, destroyed or anything. It's still perfectly fine to reuse if you want to. And if you look here, the big fat winding here, the D, there's a double D, D and a D. That's your transmit. And I'll just pull this off here. This should come away really easy. Is where they just uh, hopefully they hot melt glue it, and not pour resin everywhere. Um, that's a pain. It's hot melt glue in there, uh, isopropyl alcohol, and uh, just carve beside it. It'll it will lift. Okay. Yuck. This tape is quite sticky. Maybe that's what they call it, sticky tape. Dear me. Okay. Now, I'll show you some other tricks on these double D coils as well. When I took this tape off, it's hiding something. Don't know if you can see it. Can you see that little loop of wire there? That's in that's part of the receive coil. And what they do, they leave a little bit of wire off and they put it on um, a measuring device, basically looking at how much of the transmit signal they can stop getting into the receive, receive coil. And they, it's called a bucking, a bucking uh, loop. Um, anyway, that, they'll wiggle it around and they'll measure it to where it, Sort of has a more or less a null uh, driving this one to that one, and when they find that null, they just lock it down with tape in that position. Um, some of them are a bit rough, and uh, some of them are okay. But yeah, that's the um, thing. And also, you'll probably notice that when I went round, I should have been more careful. 
See, around here, you've got to be very, very careful because that's where the wires are. And I just noticed that I put the blade through the receive winding. Oh, one of the wires connecting there. There you go. It's no big deal. Um, there's the other end of it. And people say, oh, you shouldn't, shouldn't re-solder uh, litz wire. Well, um, have a look in here. You can see at the end of this. Look at the size of that solder blob in there, right? That's um, that's why they use those ferrite cores over this on the uh, 7,000 uh, coils. So that will not react with the ground and regenerate a signal um, for this moving, being energised, it'll energise, and as it moves with the ground, it'll actually generate a a signal like a target so that's why they put those big cores in those uh, uh, coils to obscure solder joints and you know there's there's one here and one there in the in the uh well the, it's basically in the 7000 you got uh, a big coil in the middle if you transmit coil and you got two receives on the outside sort of like a double d but you haven't got they're not crossed over they're further out so anyway that's how they, they work. You could actually, they, you, I was going to say, you could actually probably modify this and use it on 7000 if you put another transmit winding in, but because the receive winding is so thin, they use very, very thin litz wire when they make this, and you need to use thick litz wire when you make the transmit coil to handle, or um, so you don't have any ohmic losses when you pulse it with a fair bit of voltage and current. Uh, you want it to. Um, you know, absorb a lot of energy and then give it out. If it was if it was made a thin wire like that, you wouldn't be able to energize the coil properly. But because the receive doesn't go into a um, a low impedance load or anything, it can just be made a very thin wire. Uh, it is better to make it out of thick wire uh, for just uh, for less ohmic losses. If you measure the uh, receive winding, it can be around about fifteen or twenty ohms. Whereas you measure the transmit winding, it's probably about 0.2 of an ohm. So there's a big difference there. If you want to make a really good uh, one of these, make your receive coil like that. Um, it will have less losses and work better. But anyway, um, I'm not in the manufacturing business of coils, so that's how that's made. Now, I will tell you some home truths about coils, okay? How, how to wreck a really good coil. You want to wreck a really good coil that's used uh, at uh, relatively high frequencies, turned on, turned off. You want it to decay fast. Well, it's it's a two it's a two pronged thing. Uh, in one way it's good, in one way it's bad. And basically, you don't want any of these windings moving when you're using the coil. You don't want these the strands. Because you know, there's umpteen dozen turns of wire. If this, if the wire moves like that, it'll make a signal. It'll generate a uh, an effect, and your detector will be making woo woo sounds. So what they do on this one, and a lot of other manufacturers, they all do it. They uh, paint it with varnish or resin, right? And you do that, and yep, you um. Hmm. Well, do one unvarnished and do one uh, wound without varnish and go and stick it on a Q meter and you'll see what happens. Uh, try and avoid varnishing your wind windings and getting varnish in between the wire to wire um, as it's wound. Uh, yeah, even so, there's a lot of loose wire here anyway. It didn't get varnished, so sort of, you know, it's a bit half and half. And transmit winding, um, it's also varnished and wrapped in tape. Yep, it's solid as a rock. If you try to pull these, if you try to pull this out, you'll end up with shards. It just break off like fiberglass. You can't get the, you can't recover the uh, wire. So what you could do if you really, really wanted to, you, what I would do, put the snips through it. Where it's loose here, just run run the snips through it, and just count how many ends you've got, 
and then you'll know how many turns there are. And it doesn't make any difference if you're one or two turns more or less. Doesn't don't care less. Um, the other thing too, for a double D, and you probably won't know because you can't see, across the double D winding, the fine wire here, there is a 560 ohm resistor. The reason being is that the damping circuit, as in the resistor placed across the coil to get rid of the flyback, is connecting to the transmit, but the receive one hasn't got one. So they just put a resistor in here, which uh, damp dampens uh, the uh, fl you know the residual flyback and energy from this any leakage. It uh, basically shuts this coil down very quickly. Uh, what you could do if you really wanted to see that resistor is always there, right? So it's a, it's sucking your receive energy. It's uh, diminishing your receive signal to a degree, but you could if you wanted to is in the double D circuit and you made your own coils, get rid of that resistor, right? Maybe you could probably put something in there of about maybe, I don't know, I'm guessing maybe four point, you know, four or 5,000 ohms as uh, a little bit of a impedance lowering device and then put a, another damping circuit, just parallel it inside the detector off the existing damping circuit on the double D uh, side. So you just, just, um, put another little MOSFET in there, driven off the same um, damping MOSFET as the transmitter, and just have it that uh, it uh, has a uh, resistor. You could probably use the same value, 390 ohms, and just switch it to ground um, on on this coil in the detector. And you, you may even be able to get rid of that resistor, but I, I don't know. It's got a lot more turns on it, so it might be a little bit more reactive. I don't know. I haven't done it. But I'm just saying, if you want to do that, you can do it. Try it. See what happens. Um, yeah, so that's a double D. So uh, I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use the foam. I'm not going to use the wire. Um, I'm only going to use the shell. I'm not, I'm not going to use the carbon. got no use for it. Uh, I do mine completely different. Um, even the carbon running around here next to the coil... Because it's a continuous run, it's uh, not broken, actually acts as a partial shorted turn and dumbs down the coil. People don't know that, well, you do now, but it does. Anything which is circular and conductive around a coil will couple like a transformer and it will rob energy from the coil. It takes a little bit from transmit, not that you're going to feel it, but uh, more so. Um, it may have a more profound effect on the receive winding. And if you're running a mono, your mono is a transmit and receive. Take that into account. So there, there's ways to mitigate that effect. But uh, should I give away all my trade secrets uh, when many, many commercial interests watch my videos? I don't know if I should. But uh, there are, like I say, there are ways uh, around that. Yeah. So if you want, you can recover that foam. This is the foam they use in refrigerated uh, trucks, basically. And uh, yeah, they just, you can slice it. Uh, you can get a slicing machine. It's usually a lot thicker than this and slice it down to what you want. And uh, these bits here, there's many ways to put the grooves in there. Uh, what you can do is just use a router, uh, make up a routing jig, and you can just route those uh, Add a bit of foam to the cows, come home. That foam is quite hard. Uh, it's not, um, you know, like like white foam. It, it doesn't move. I mean, you can I can stick my thumb in it if I wanted to. But uh, yeah, that's that. That's a coil. If you want, you can remove. If if you ever have this problem here, which I don't know what happened here, but uh, if you want to put new cable on it, it's very very uh, easy. Very carefully put isopropyl on the hot melt glue there and there, and that's just holding the windings down. And you'll see under here very carefully because those little fine wires will run through that. And if you pull it hard, it will uh, yeah rip those wires out. But I'm not worried about the one there I cut because it's easy. You can actually re join it really easy. And if you want to be really clever, put a high frequency ferrite bead on it. Um, 
I didn't tell you that, but uh, you can do that and obscure the solder joint. You can also do it on uh, those big, um, where, it's, where it's been uh, soldered with a big blob in there. What you do, the trick is, uh, where the wires are soldered here, right, where the cable comes out, what you want to do, any of your soldering that you do, you want to do it somewhere like on, on this, it's, it's on a mono what you do is you do it one third uh, of the way here and you would actually do it there get that solder joint away from your winding especially on the receive and you don't want any of the transmitter either you don't want it anywhere near that so you go you got to sort of look at it and say oh a dead point would be there you stick it there okay so that's where you'd run your wires and then you'd make a channel, you'd, you'd, you'd twist your wires like a little, what the attempt is to do there. So it acts as a transmission line. And uh, we've, uh, so it doesn't pick up anything because you, you're twisting it. Okay. So put a channel in there and then go in and then your cable goes up. So doing the solder joints right next to the winding and that, that is uh, the same issue what they try to get a... Um, around with the design of the coils for the 7000 the only one i've ever pulled apart is the x coil that's got it in there i take it the others have as well um, because they're trying to make any met metallic sizable join not uh, get affected by um, you know the ground often back the signal into that target and then that that re-decays in the receive time frame and then it'll make noise in the detector so it's it's probably a little bit more critical on those detectors than what it is on this but uh i still wouldn't do it uh <laughs> some people do it hey i've got to say in my opinion right in my opinion so take it with a grain of salt uh that's uh that's how you do it so yep the uh, little fine wire which uh goes through here which uh yeah oh there it is i see it there yep i can actually see it i don't know if i can flick it up now i use a very sharp little blade here now it's stuck in hot melt glue damn but uh all you got to do is there yeah, i can see it down there um that just goes on to your outer braid your um ground earth whatever you want to call it the outside part of your cable that just solders to that so all this is basically connected to the braid of the transmit winding so i'm just just checking it out i really need to make sure how they've done this uh, there's two ways of doing it you can rely on the um, earth grounding back in the detector plug um, on the cable plug or in the detector or you can do it here so uh, there is trade-offs for every variation of connecting up the grounds of, on both coils, actually. So there you go. That's um, a double D. But the bit I'm interested in, sticking to my fingers, is not that. That, that can go somewhere for a rainy day. Uh, or maybe someone wants the foam to build something. I don't know. But the bit we want to keep is here. Because we can make our own coil. And other thing too, guys, before you put your coil plug on, poke the bloody cable through there. <laughs> right? Because you can't, you, how are you going to do it if the cable's got a plug on it? You can't put it in. So always do that first. Uh, there's a fair bit of uh, depth there. I can make a nice, um, very high Q coil. And uh, when you put it back together like so, you probably might want to match up exactly. Put a put a uh, mark on it so you know where everything lines up. You can probably see where the glue is um, this side and that side, so you can spin it round to line it up. So you don't have any great whopping gaps. Uh, you know, like big lumps of glue on big lumps of glue. So it, you know the high bits sit in the low bits where they were. And what you do, get a cotton bud and dip it in acetone and run it around there probably your best best idea is wet this down first just a cotton bud don't put tons and tons of acetone on it like very quickly 
wipe it around here. There you go, acetone around there. It'll start getting a bit tacky. Then do, do the same around here. Don't get it. You can see where the line is. You have a look there. You can see the line just doing on the top part there. Stick this thing together like so. And then to finish it off and make it look really, really neat, run the acetone uh, on a cotton bud. You know, dip, apply, dip, apply all the way around. And it'll be like a bought one. So that's how you do it. I hope that was interesting. Anyway, it's past, it's past my dinner time. It's uh, 8.30. So, yeah, it took longer than I thought. So anyway, that's how you do a coil. You can do a rebuild. You do whatever you want. Um, just beware. And if you do, if you want to be really smart, I'll see if I've got some here. I, I have somewhere. Um, I've got little tiny ferrite beads. You want um, uh, high permeability type ferrite beads. Uh, they basically look like a fat piece of spaghetti, but very short. I can't spot them, but I've got them in a bag somewhere. Uh, and if you build coils, if you want to be really clever, uh, on your solder joints, put a ferrite bead over the a solder joint because the solder uh, joint can't interact with anything. It's getting uh, basically circumvented by the bead. And you can use high permeability ferrite beads, which will cause a barrier, or the other way of doing it, you can use um, um, uh, carbon or reduced powdered iron cores, small ones, where that will just absorb any re-radiation from um, the metallic object. And because it's so small, it's not going to have any effect on the overall design of the coil, but it also uh, limit any effect coming back from the energized ground. So, yeah, um, no, number six mix or something like that, uh, you can put a, a small ferrite on there or use a high permeability type um, ferrite. Uh, well, they use just basically the same as uh, noise suppression. You know, stick it on anything. <laughs> uh, J-Car sell them. <laughs> you can buy from anywhere. But the small ones, um, get them from Radio Spares or Mouse or DigiKey. Uh, it's nothing. It's just like it. Uh, you, you want it sort of like... Uh, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the uh, effective permeability of the material, but it doesn't really make any difference. 100, 200, from 300, whatever. Experiment, like I say. Um, yeah, I don't even know what ones I've got. <laughs> I just remember looking at it like years ago, and I said, oh, I'll have a bag of those. I have a bag of probably a 1,000, and uh, I've been using them ever since. So if you do want to disguise your uh, soldering and stuff in your coils, um, cover them all with a ferrite bead and or iron powder type and make sure that you make sure the bead doesn't wiggle on the wire so what you do is get some hot melt glue and squish it in the bead onto the metal joint let it set and then bob's your uncle or if his name's not bob whoever but anyway uh, i'm gonna go and have something to eat catches <laughs>